Hi, I'm Zim Swartz, and we've been working through a lot of different questions and on the projects and calculations for resource allocation. We're pretty close to the end of part one, so hang in there. We've been talking about shift relief factor, the number of officers, and our, we've been using the shift length of eight the whole time. But what if you actually change your shift length? What if you increase it to 10 hours or 12 hours? A lot of different chiefs and law enforcement officials will then say they need more officers to fill in those gaps. That's not necessarily the case. But if we do change our shift length, whether it goes from a 10 to an 8 or an 8 to a 12, whatever it may be, there are going to be some changes that occur. However, we keep, can keep our staffing levels the same if we meet the four conditions I'm getting ready to discuss. If we keep these four conditions the same and meet every one of them, staffing levels will remain the same. If one or more of them is not the same, then you either need more or less officers. Something has happened. So let's look at the four conditions. When changing to a different shift length, your staff size will remain constant as long as number one, the average work week is the same. Two, your benefit time off, your non-patrol time, and your net comp time off has to be converted to hours. Some agencies still use days. However, if you convert it into hours and you meet that condition, you'll satisfy keeping your staff size the same. The total patrol workload must stay the same. So if you go to a different shift length, do not start adding calls or taking away calls. It has to stay the same so that you are comparing between the two. And the last condition, the mix of the units must remain the same. So if you always have one officer cars on patrol, you cannot change it to two officer, etc if you change the shift length. My agency previously, we went to a 10 hour day. However, we did not need the same number of staff because we had two officer cars at times because we did not have enough patrol cars to accommodate the change. So you must keep this the same. Again, if you meet all four conditions, your staff size will be the same. If there is one of them that is not met, that will mess it all up and you will need more or less officers. So let's look at each one of these individually. The average work week remains the same. That's the first condition. When you do that and change the shift length, there will be an adjustment. Your RSTO will change. Obviously, more hours means they have more days off a year, etc. That's okay. The adjustment is okay to happen and will happen as long as you meet that first condition. Let's look at an example. To meet condition one, we have to keep the work week the same. As you can see from a five on, two off, average work week of 40, and the four on, three off on the right hand side, average week of 40, that stayed the same. But as we told you, the RSTO will change and that's okay. You take your 365 times two, the number of off days in that first one, divided by seven, your duty cycle length, five plus two. On the right side, you'll see that the RSTO did increase because of the different values we're plugging into that particular formula. That's okay because we still met the condition of the average work week being the same at 40 hours per week. Condition number two, the BTO, NPT, and NCTO has to remain the same. It has to be measured in hours, not days. Now we're talking about condition number two the BTO, MPT, NCTO. If you remember from our earlier example, we simply took it times eight. In this case, if our shift length is 10, we take it all by 10. This would be a policy of days off, which is not the norm. In essence, what you're doing is giving people more benefit time off, more non-patrol time, et cetera. Again, we took it by eight before because that was our shift length. If we're going to a 10 hour shift, are you going to give them more vacation, more time off, more holidays? And it depends on if your agency or your city or county, whatever it may be, uses days off versus hours. Do they, what do they calculate in? In my particular city now, some of our vacation is accounted for by hours. However, we had holidays as in days. So when we recently switched from an eight to a 10 hour shift, they received more vacation hours, in essence, and holidays because we do it in days. So before, we simply took these three values of the SRF we've looked at and multiplied, added them up, and multiplied by 10. However, that's a days policy. 
To meet the condition we're talking about, you have to do it in hours. And let me show you right here. In this particular slide, if we use an hours off policy, not to be confused with the conversion, you must convert. But if you use hours policy, your RSTO will be 10 hours, of course, that's a regular scheduled time off, but your BTO, NPT, and NCTO will not change. It'll be multiplied by eight hours, not 10. So if you want to give them more benefit time, that's great. You can use the days off type policy. If you choose the days policy, you would multiply everything by 10. If you use the hours policy, you must keep those still at eight hours because you're not giving them more benefit time. So in essence, you would still add up the four categories, which is a little bit different here, and then plug it into your shift relief factor formula to get your overall shift relief factor of 2.163. Let me show you an example here just to show you what actually happens. On the eight hour shift, five on, two off, we had originally found that your RSTO was 834.4 hours and your other three categories was 398.4. We added those up to plug it in to our shift relief factor formula on the bottom part denominator and we had an SRF of 1.731. What if I now change to a 10 hour shift I have to multiply the RSTO by 10 because that's the shift length. But if I take all the rest by 10 because I'm being generous and giving them more time off and more benefits, you can see how that would increase your total number of hours. We still have to convert it to hours for the formula of 2062. So in essence, your shift relief factor formula would go to 2.298 does not sound like a lot, but when you're multiplying that by the number of on duty, it will greatly affect the total number of officers you have. Now, what if I picked a policy of hours? As you can see, these two numbers added together is 1962.4. Plugged in will give me an SRF of 2.163. Right here, if I stay in days, I'm going to give them more time off. If you pick the policy of hours, which you will have to do on the project, those three numbers stay the same. You're not going to give them more time off and you will keep it at the eight hours. The third condition we're trying to meet is the total patrol workload. It has to stay the same. However, the adjustment is the number of units fielded per day will change. So let me show you an example of the third condition. These are the same numbers we've been using all along in our example in the PowerPoint. And as you can see, our total obligated time was 17,249 hours. We figured out our total unobligated time, added those together, and plugged it in. If you remember, our number of units was 18 units a day. However, if we change the shift length to 10 hours, you now will put a 10 in the denominator of this equation. So it will be 1 over 10 multiplied by your total patrol workload time which stays the same, so we've met that condition. But as you can see, we go down from eight, or go from 18 units a day down to 15 units a day. That's okay, as long as that 51,747 is the same. We've met that condition. The last condition is the mix of the unit types. If you always have had one officer units on patrol, make sure you keep that. If you've always had two officer units, are fortunate enough to have that, keep that as well. However, the adjustment is the number of positions per day will change. Just as an example, if we had two officer, one officer, and foot patrol, and the number of units was 5, 11, and 2, you can get the percentage of those units and what that calculates to be. On a 10-hour shift, you still have to keep the percentages the same, the 28, 61, 11, but of course, your number of units will change as shown here. Remember, all four conditions must be met to keep your staffing size the same. If one or more of those is not met, something is changed on the condition side, then you either need fewer or more officers. So we've now looked at the four conditions to keep staffing size the same if you change your shift length, regardless if it's from 8 to a 10 or a 10 to a 12. So you don't always need more officers. You may ask for it, but the budgets won't always allow. 
So make sure you maintain those four conditions and what that means in your calculations to keep the staff size the same.